Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Bat Thought Studios. Today, we are doing a season two, episode one of House of the Dragon breakdown. Before we get started, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe and notifications on so you guys are notified once a video is uploaded. Today, we are, uh, I got X Rod Television joining me today. What's going on, X? What's up, bro? What's going on, my dude? We've been anticipating this season for two years, bro. Yep. Two freaking years, man. And we threw our theories out for multiple episodes that we've done. And, it, you know, I'm excited to see what we get from that. Just our just our theories that we got. Yeah. I'm so excited. But go ahead and tell everyone where they can find you on social media. And, um, yeah, let them, let them know. On all social medias, xrod underscore TV or xrod TV. Sometimes it gets put together. Um, but on all socials, X, Insta, Facebook, I'm there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got Kiki and Luca in the house. What up, Kiki? Kiki and Luca. What up? What up? What up? Hey, we got Raymond. What up, Raymond? What's up, Ray? Uh, Ray is a friend from TikTok. <laughs> um, he said blood and cheese sucked. Yeah, we're going to get into all that. We're going to get, oh, we'll get into that. Oh, we'll yeah. get into that. He said I was waiting for two years for that. Yeah, uh, Kiki and Luca, we're going to get into all that, and I want you to... Um, I want you to give me your your um, reasoning of why you didn't like it. All right, um, bro. So let's start off with this. You know, we we anticipated seeing Cregan Stark this year, uh, which is the uh, which is the um, Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. From what I'm told, I thought he was going to be the Lord for, of Winterfell, but apparently he's the Lord of um, of the Night's Watch at the moment. <clears throat> I'm not too sure how the book works or how the story's going to go, but as of right now, we are getting that. Um, but how was it to see Cregan, bro? Like, we, we go back to the north, and we, we see the one dude that we wanted to see the most. Uh, you know, for me, it was like, it was nostalgic, bro. It was like, you know, once I saw the emblem on a, on his chest, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, we're, we're in the north, bro. And then when they showed the wall, I was like, mm, this thing is still standing. <laughs> yep. You know, we, we know how it is, but no, I I honestly thought it, it, whoever plays him, I actually didn't look at the actor, but that was he was great. Phenomenal, right? Yeah, he was fantastic. Um yeah, he gave me the sense of this is still Game of Thrones. And when he said, you know, I can't spare my people, I'm I gotta keep my guys in the north, and we obviously know why. He's like, I'm not scared of the whitelings. I'm not scared of winter. I'm scared of death. I'm scared we know of what death. kind of death that was, and I was like, Ooh. "Bro, when, when he said that, I was I had chills, bro. Yeah. I had chills. <laughs> this shit was fucking yeah. nuts, dude." And um, okay, so my initial reaction when I saw Cregan Stark, I was like, "This is going to be crazy," because he's they threw him in the freaking fire from the start. First yeah. freaking ten minutes, like the first three four minutes, is him at the wall. Which is Sarah's, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" When I heard that voice, bro, I yeah. thought that was Jon Snow at first, dude. Yeah, I for real thought it was Jon Snow. I was like, "Wait, what? Is yeah, that Jon?" It's crazy, but but it's it, uh, that northern dialect is it just gives me that freaking you know that that northern vibe, bro. I got I got to throw the hat on, chat. I got to throw the hat on. By the way, shout out X Rod for the uh, for the hat. Everyone was asking in chat where I got my hat from. Um, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, it was crazy. But just that northern dialect, bro, is just didn't it just give you the freaking like the yips? Well, that's the thing, you know, like I think if you watched Game of Thrones, you have your favorite characters and but the people of the north are they're different, man. They're they're oh, yeah. different. Like I don't know, like one like I said, nostalgia. When I watched that, I'm like, damn, now I want to go watch Thrones all over again while I'm gonna be watching House of the Dragon, you know. Yeah. Exactly. And um, for those who don't know and rewatching this, uh, not during the live, but if you guys are rewatching this, um, it is a they announced last night that that will be the only appearance from Cregan Stark for the rest of the season. Season two, we will not be seeing Cregan Stark. Most likely we're going to be getting him in season three and four mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. But um, crazy, dude. Everyone expected him to be within the season, just be this this badass guy, and bam, that was the only thing we got from him. Well, maybe this, we're gonna get some badass this now uh, next season. Like, oh man, that, that's gonna be great. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah. Um, and then as soon as he got that letter, bro, he got that uh, the Raven got the letter, and he looked at freaking. Um, he got that, or he got that letter, and he looked at Jaceres G- when Kriegen Stark read the letter. Yeah, he looked at Jaceres, and dude, you know what the no, you know what the uh, the note said, bro. Right. You right. know what the note said, and that gave you the chills right there. Yeah, that, that whole part. As soon as you looked at him, I was like, oh, like, and and to be in the north, you're not even close to home, and to find out, you know, yep. as a as a brother, and I mean, onto that, you know, that the next scene when you see Jaceres again heartbreaking i mean i was i wasn't crying but i was like oh my heart's a little tender right now <laughs> yep exactly uh king of the north says yo what's good it's matt what up matt what's going on brody um starks are badass in the books dude yes yeah, starks are oh will always have or be my like starks are badass period yeah starks will always be my uh my second home dude the north bro even though i hate the freaking snow i'm there oh yeah if there, oh, yeah. if it was summer over there, I would, I would go. <laughs> yep. Um, moving on to, um, I want to talk about Damon and Rainice. Um, when Rainice came back with um her dragon, and Damon was waiting there for her and saying, "Get back on, let's go, let's go kill Vagar and its rider, a son for a son." Like, yeah. dude, he's ready, dude. Yep, he is ready. But you know, the the beauty of. Rainice, she's that like almost that mother figure to like you need to relax buddy like relax you're gonna get yourself killed type you know type shit um but seeing them two together and and not taking them to they're not like butting heads and like you know you you need to listen to me and then you know that i love that relationship between them but what do you you think about that relationship like you like you said they're not not, they're not butting heads but it's like she yeah she has that mother figure she's like you need to calm down for a second. Let's let's think about this and wait till the queen gets back. Because if you do some shit that you shouldn't be doing right now, we're gonna be screwed. You yeah. know, like they know war is coming. She knows war is coming. Uh, Damon is ready for war. I mean, he's he's ready to throw down right now. But their relationship together, she's got to keep him in check while at least Rainier is away. And you know it's, it's going to be just chill out for now. But yep. I hope I hope to see them in the future actually battle Working together. together. Yeah, yeah. I think I think <clears throat> if we can see their dragons take off together, because if that would have went down right away, that would have been dope. Yeah, it would have been dope. But I'm glad that they waited because I like they um without Rainier there and them just taking action, they'll know that. People, uh, Rhaenyra would be like, you know, they don't fucking care about me. They'll just do whatever they want. Right. So I'm glad, I'm glad they did what they did. And they wouldn't see her as as the as the queen, you know, or she wouldn't feel that way. Oh, they don't see me as their queen because they won't listen to what I got to say. So. Exactly, exactly. Kiki and Luca asks, asks, I wonder what would have happened if they went after Vagar. Do you guys think? If they went after Vagar right there and then, they would have been blown out of the sky. They had yep. no plan. Um, um Melisa or um what's what's um uh what's her name? I forgot the dragon. They just um, I think it's Melise. Uh she just got back with her dragon, so he was uh mm-hmm. her dragon was tired, you know what I'm saying? So it, right. it, it was just from there there was there was no way of going all the way to Dragonstone and fighting Vagar. There's just no point. Yeah, no, they, they especially if yeah, after she said she covered a hundred miles of sea. There's no way her dragon would have been ready. I mean, even if you, even if you gave it, you know, hours still within that same day, no way. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, if they could have done that, they would have shown that the dragon now is tired. And maybe at some point, um, because Aemon rides Vagar, so he would have maybe noticed that the dragon was tired or whatever. Maybe went after her alone for a little bit and then went after Damon. Let's say Vagar is massive. And massive. Obviously, uh, Lucerus didn't stand a chance. So, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> he he had the smallest dragon in the. In the right. Uh, so, um, King of the North says she almost feels like Caitlin Stark, uh, Catelyn Stark, in a way, to keep Rob in check. I think that's the perfect um, comparison. That's a perfect uh, example. I like that. Yep. 
a perfect example. I, I went over this with my um with my chat. Uh, they uh, someone had said something in my TikTok. Someone had said something about this, and I, it, it was most it was one of the most perfect comparisons ever. Like they are the same people. They you know they keep everyone in check. They love their family. Like Cor Corliss Valarian, when he came back from the Stepstones hurt and all that stuff, um, Rainis wasn't pledging her loyalty to anyone. You know, she yeah. didn't pledge her loyalty to anyone. She waited for Corliss to come home and do that. Yeah. And that shows the kind of woman she is and, and the kind of leader that um, a wife should have or a husband should have is a wife like that. You know what I'm saying? And I would say uh, for Calvin Stark and Rob Stark, she, I mean, she waited for a lot of stuff for him to come back home. They talked about it and then made their decisions. Um, I definitely think that's a, that's a great comparison for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Rhaenyra. Um, when they zo when they were zooming into Rhaenyra's face, right, and she was she had that sad look on her face. Her clothes were dirty. Her face was dirty. You could tell she's been out for you know days looking for her son. Um, bro, that was the same when she's on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. That was heartbreaking, bro. Um, she you could tell she was looking for something, and then the fishermen's come in and they have a dragon wing connected to a to a um to a what is it called a net right yeah. and she, i i was so happy they didn't show like a body they just showed his cloak and a wing but w w what's your opinion on that scene because it was heartbreaking for me man oh uh, it's i mean yeah you know it's kind of a for her to find people pulling out the wing i mean they, shit, they were the people that were there were excited to find a wing not knowing the backstory, and she pulls up, which I thought was fantastic hire, but just took off. But she pulls up, and she's distraught. I mean, you know, she knows whose wing this is, and once she, I think she found like a piece of clothing or whatever it was, maybe it was his jacket. Yeah. Um. You know, she was just heartbroken. But yeah, I think if they had like a body part or of anything at all, man, that would have just. I mean, she would have just lost it. Like she already did lose it, but. It would have been way worse. Way yeah. worse. Yeah, I agree. And and it I I'm glad that they showed her being a mother first than a queen because it shows it Rhaenyra is um people look at her as just a queen and she should be loyal to the realm and and she wants people to know like I'm a mother first and then a queen. And right. you know, she showed that by being out looking for her son, showing the emotion she did. And then she comes back and she hugs uh, Jaceris and they both break down, dude. I, I'm not gonna lie, I, like I shed a tear on that part. That's what I'm saying, dude. I, I, my heart was tender at that. I was like, ooh, like you know, because for me, I, ha I have a brother. I don't know what I would do as much as he does irritate me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I there's no there's no feeling that you can have when you lose, especially a sibling or someone extremely close to you. You know, it's. Yeah, and they and they both played that. The fact that he walked in the room and was trying to tell her, like as a as a messenger, he was supposed to be, and he couldn't even hold it together. He was like, "Yeah, North is giving us two thousand men," and she was like, "Just just shut up and give me a hug." <laughs> yep. And bro, can we like the person who stole the show in in season or in episode one was Rhaenyra, and she had four fucking words within the whole episode, bro. Yep. The four yeah. e four words within the whole episode. I want Aemon Targaryen, dude. I got I have the chills that when she said that I had I have the chills now. Like it was such a like passionate fucking uh, statement by her. And uh, you know, like I said, she's a mother first, bro. She acts like she's a mother and all that stuff, but you could tell that was a queen talking. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. want Aemon Targaryen, dude. What would you think about that? I, I thought that was great, and and what a reaction to have, especially like you know you, at that point you can you can say it's going to cost the lives of everybody I love. This war is going to start. I mean, and especially between family, it's 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 everyone you love and everyone you've ever cared about against each other. So she had the opportunity to stop it, and she said, "No, nah, fuck this, give me him," you yeah. know, and. Mm -hmm. Especially, especially like close and bloodline like that. She didn't give a fuck. She's like, it's over. Yeah. Um, 
An another, an uh, oh, let's go to the comments real quick. Young Rainier, Millie Alcock was tough. I like Emma Darcy, but she always seems weak. I mean, Kiki and Luca, it, it's not the actress. It's the, the writing. It's the script. Um, you got to remember that she's an older person now and she didn't have a, she had her mom. Um, and you know what happened to her mom broke her, you know what I'm saying? And, um, that when she became a mother, her whole life changed, bro. And that you could tell on screen too, when she became a mother, she became this person. Of course we got to see her start as a mother. Like she, she already had two kids she was given birth when we seen emma darcy um first uh, the first in season one um like that was the character she became in that time jump um but that's just screenwriting bro that's that's all in my opinion um kiki and lucas says what else was on the wing no that wasn't a part of the body it was the um uh luceris or just luceris's cloak Lucerus's cloak or his his um his clothes. Um, I want to see Rhaenyra the Cruel. Uh, you're gonna see her now. Mm -hmm. Now she's breathing gonna... fire. She's a, yep. she's a dragon now. She's breathing fire. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so next, bro, <clears throat> I want to talk about Aegon. Aegon surprised me. He surprised me too. <laughs> Aegon fucking surprised me, bro. I was I was very impressed with you know him as a father. Um the only thing cruel that he really did in episode 1 was um have his son go to ride Tylen uh Lannister. Yeah. And I mean not that he did it, but he was encouraging him to encouraging him to do it. And that was the only cruel thing that he kind of try to put power over Tylen and say, oh, I want to have my son get on your back and ride you like a pony. But what'd right. you think about Aegon, bro? I, I was impressed. I, I was, you know, not that I'm an Aegon fan yet, but he, he's growing on me now. So it, it was funny because <clears throat> when, when I saw that, and when I saw that scene with Tylen and he said, um, he was like, Oh, are, are we bothering you? You know, like, and then I was like, like, yeah, dude, they let the kid have the damn ball for a second. Like, what do you care? You don't necessarily need it. It's just yeah, yeah. to symbolize that you're there. Everybody yeah. sees you, so you're good. Um, so, but I, I, I thought that was hilarious when he was like, be his pony. And that would have been hilarious to see a, a okay. Lannister, a, a, yeah, a Lannister on his knees. But oh. um, the, what the part that surprised me the most was that he's coming into – his uh his king roles mm -hmm. you know as he's still kind of to me I, I consider him like a like a frat boy he has that kind of frat boy vibe you know like especially at the at the end when he was yeah, sitting on the, the throne, throne hanging out with yeah. his boys but <clears throat> at the same time when he when he was taking the petitions from um the townsfolk the yeah um he was talking to them and he was like i want to do right by you guys and of course Otto won't just shut up and let him do what he's got to do. <laughs> like, bro, I get it. We're, you're going to war, and yeah, you're going to need as much as you can, especially from the people of the town or you know your city. And but like at the same time, he's trying to be a good king, so people can support him. And from what I recall in uh, Game of Thrones, is that the Targaryens did care about the the people, or at least for a few of them until. Um, until the last Aegon was taken over. Yep. But yeah, you know, and when and when he said I'll give you back your sheep and the guy was surprised, I was like, shit, I'm shocked too, bro. Cause I wasn't yep. expecting to say that. I mean, you know, he could have said, We'll give you half of what we've taken back or something. But yeah, you know, I, I thought that was great. And yeah, for him to be a father, even though we know some of his kids are out there in the streets, you know, in fighting pits and shit, that was still I was like, damn, he cares the 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 one thing that um i think changed him was people chanting his name during his coronation and he holds up his sword yeah and as they're cheering his name i think that changed him for the good he's seen the people were cheering his name he thinks he should do right by them yeah <clears throat> excuse me and i think that might have changed Aegon. um now what happened uh, we'll, we'll get to what happened at the end but uh, i'm sure that's going to change it back to who he was but 
he he surprised me, bro. Aegon surprised me. Um, he he's maturing. He knew his role as a king. He's stepping into it. Um, and he was trying to do right by his people, as you could tell during those during those meetings. Um, and he was being a father. He was he yeah. brought he brought his son to the to the um to the a council meeting. Um, although he didn't last it very long, but yeah. Um, Aegon was really good. Keegan Lucas says Aegon was really good. Um, King of the North says, even though I'm not team green, they are cool as hell. <laughs> Aegon definitely gives Ramsey vibes. I, I disagree uh, with that. I disagree I mean, with that. <clears throat> I don't, I don't think we're torturing, but I, I, I would have to disagree with that one. Um, if anything, maybe like a Jamie Lannister vibe. Cause he was kind of like an asshole at first. And, yeah, I agree with that. You know, uh, maybe not as far as swordsmen's, but um, you know, maybe I don't know. Uh, Ramsey, maybe not yet. Maybe possibly here in the future, but as of right now, I don't think so. Maybe after this episode, we might we might say a little bit more of a Ramsey vibe. Yeah, Aegon and Aemon, both fantastic actors. Yeah, I can't agree. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. All right, moving on to Helena, bro. Um, Helena Targaryen. Um, that scene where she's sitting down knitting the the shroud um it was a very cool scene to me um if you guys look closely Aegon walks in they have their conversation Aegon says you know I want my son she says why do you want him he's doing his studies Aegon says I want to take him to the council meaning he's going to be king one day and Aegon says the words he's going to be king one day correct Helena responds and says, what if he doesn't want to be king? And that that will be a um, statement we'll go we'll come back on um, when we talk about blood and cheese. But he says, what if she says, what if he doesn't want to be king? And then he goes and says, um, where is he or where's this? You know, where's the studies? But when he Aegon starts to walk out, she stops him and says, I'm afraid. And when she said that, she starts to talk. uh, She said she's afraid of the rats. And then the f- as soon as she says, I'm afraid of the rats, she looks at the left crib. Uh, um, later on, we'll talk about when we talk about blood and cheese, uh, she points at the left crib. Um, but Hel- Helena is a people need to realize that Helena is a um, character who doesn't feel emotion or not feel emotion, but does she doesn't process emotions like everyone else within the um within the realm she is i think it's called a euro divergent i think it's called I, I forgot the word but um she just doesn't process information like everyone else also she is a dragon dreamer she she has these dreams that she you gotta guys gotta remember she's a high tower she's a targaryen but she's mostly a high tower no one no targaryen really talked to um helena like like for rhaenyra she had her mom she had, you know, she had the education from her mother. For her, she's a high tower, so she's getting these dreams, and you know, she doesn't know what to do with them. No one explained anything to her. No one told her how these dreams work. No one knows where these, you know, how long in the future she knows what's going to happen. Like she doesn't know any of this stuff, and she has no one else to talk to about it because they all think she's crazy. They all, they all think she's weird, but. Yeah. It, you know, t- talk to me about Helena, not not the blood and cheese part yet, but talk to me about Helena and her, you know, the way she acts. What do you think about her character in season one or episode one? You know, she, when we find out she can see the future, I mean, obviously the Helena line that sits in my head is, you know, uh, beware the beasts beneath the floorboards. The I mean, beasts beneath the boards. Beneath, beasts beneath the boards. And, hey, that was wild to say already off the spot, and we have no idea. You know, we can only assume it was the dragons, but but now, you know, saying uh, when she said I'm 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 scared of the rats, not what I was entirely thinking for the ending. I was actually thinking, um, what's his name? Strong, Larry Strong. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking him because I know a lot of people were saying, or a lot of uh, theory was he can control the rats. Are you, are you I, me, I, I said that. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
No, I think I said it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a theory that you came up with um, that he can control the rats, and and they were, and then they really started to focus on that at the end of season one. So now all this information, or I don't know if it's if the rats are seeing this and chirping it to him and saying whatever. But then the ending threw me because I obviously I don't, I don't read the books. So now I'm like, oh shit. Like yeah. we're talking about the rat catcher, you know, we're not talking about anything else. Um, but yeah, for her character and her reactions to things, I don't think she can really necessarily have these emotions because she sees it already. So is mm -hmm. she having the emotion in the time she's seeing these visions um, and this already processed it. So now it's time, no reaction. Let's just see if she, she see if she can change it. I think that's maybe maybe what she because she tries to deter at the end with blood and cheese and having her necklace taken in a value of maybe her children. But again, she doesn't react to I'm scared of the rats, but that's about it. You know, she doesn't really show any more. That's kind of it. But I do love her character because she foreshadows so much mm -hmm. in very few words. And then you're like, okay, well, now I need to know. Like, what are we talking about? Yep. Um, <laughs> Candy Camper, what up, bro? Uh, wow, is that X Rod? I haven't seen him in a in, on a show in a while. I know that's facts because he sees me in real life sometimes. That's facts. <laughs> um, so the word I was looking for is neurodivergent. Um, let me read this to you guys. Uh, neurodivergent uh, person uh, refers to a person on the autism spectrum, or more generally, to someone with who's to someone whose brain processes informa information in a way that is not typically in mo of most individuals. So she can't process information properly. You know, she's, she, you could tell she's, you know, she's always to herself. She's very like, if someone talks to her, she puts her head down. Remember when Otto came in and um, asking where Aegon was, she like comes in and puts her head down. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's yeah. those kind of, that's why I was laughing. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, but yeah, she, she that's her. Like people don't realize that they think she's just this normal person, but you can obviously tell she's not. And people think like I, I will we'll discuss this at the end because it's it's very important to the story. But that's her, and people need to realize that. Um, next, I want to move to um, Allison and the Queen Slayer. Um, I mean, Kristen Cole. Um, Kristen Cole, man, and Allison, that scene when she's getting ate up by, um, uh, by Kristen Cole, bro, I, it, it pissed me off. Not going to lie. It pissed me off. I, it was hot, but it pissed me off, bro. It was hot, but it was irritating as yeah. shit. Okay. Let, let me explain and, uh, my, my stance on it. And then I want to hear from you. Um, the whole reason of them especially allison being pissed off with with rhaenyra <clears throat> is because she didn't take her duties seriously right she got to do whatever her whatever she want which it which wasn't obvious in season one and i'm really disappointed in um the that being the reasoning of why she hates uh allison hates rhaenyra but that that's a different um video <clears throat> she hates rhaenyra and the one of the main reasons why is because she slept with um, she slept with Kristen Cole, right? Kristen Cole, the pussy that he is, um, oh run away with me, and then she says no, and then he says she says we could still keep doing what we're doing, and then he doesn't want to be called a whore now because um, he he pledged a um, he pledged celibacy for being on the knights the knights or what is it called the knights guard or king's guard uh, king's guard. Yeah. He, he thinks his pledge to the king's guard was more important than her pledge of being the freaking heir which irritated the fuck I, he's a pussy to me anyway um it was contradicting bro that whole scene was contradicting them two pissed off at rainier for doing what um she did with Kristen cole they're fucking like it, it, <laughs> like it just they're doesn't fucking. make sense they're fucking bro <laughs> it, it's just as simple as that they out here fucking and they're contradicting why they're pissed off at Rhaenyra, and it pisses me off. It it irritated the fuck out of me. But let's hear what you guys say about it. No, I, I absolutely agree. It, it, and yeah, motherfucker, you you got all pissy 
because she was like, we can still do this, but I don't want a relationship right now. She's like, I'm young. Like, yeah, I have my duties to the throne, but I'm also trying to have a good time. Okay. Like we, we know that shit, that's life, but you got all pissy about it. And then for Allison to get, to be doing the same thing with the person, the same guy in the first place. Come on, bro. And yeah, sir, sir, Kristen Cole is a gold digging hoe. Yeah. He is a gold digger for sure. Trying to level yeah. himself up anywhere he can. Yeah. And that whole thing. Oh, you, I, I'm a, I'm a be a, uh, I'm going to be your whore. Yeah, bitch. You're, you're a whore now too. You were before yeah. and you're freaking, you're a whore now. My bad, YouTube. I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but it's just in the show. Don't worry about it. We're not calling. We're calling the character a whore, okay? Um, yeah, bro. It the, it irritated me, and I was I was very, very, very confused on the contradiction of that relationship. Um, it was just weird. It was it was just totally weird. Yeah, and for Allison to really not even have like a you know, she says. We can't do that again. Bullshit. Yeah. We know. Yeah. You are riding him like a stallion in that room. Yeah, Come yeah. on. She, she thought she was on Vagar for a minute, bro. Yep. Absolutely. Um, next, I want to talk about Eamon. Um, Eamon is, you could tell he's very mature. He's probably the one mature person there. He is a through and through leader in a role where he can't lead which is very unfortunate. Um, you could tell he was scheming, not scheming in a bad way, but scheming for the greens to attack uh, the blacks. Um, but his character, man, he's just, you could tell he's hes in the wrong shoes and he wants to be king. He wants to be a leader. Um, and it just shows, bro. It shows in Eamon. I, I love his character. Yeah, I hate what he did to Lucerus. It sucks. But I mean, you, it's hard to hate this guy, bro. It's yeah. very hard to hate this guy. His character development so far, from when a kid, from him being a kid to getting bullied by his brother and his and his nephews to owning the biggest dragon by taking charge, um, being uh, this you know this guy who wants more than just being than just the brother of the king. You know what I'm saying? But t tell me what you think about Eamon. I, you know, I think he's dope. I think he's a cool character. But let me hear you. Let me hear what you think about him. He, he's he's sick. I mean, there's there's nothing else to really say. Yeah, he's in a he's in a position where if if I was going to go team green at all, it would just be because of him. And yep. you know, he he makes you want to as many as much as time he's he he didn't have on screen for this episode. He brought a lot to the table in in a little bit of seconds. When he walked in the walked in the uh, the small council, and you know, Alice is like, "Oh, you're not you're not part of this. Like, step on out." Yeah. He's like, "I'm here because I need to be." He's like, "I'm yeah. I'm the my best one out of all of here. us." Yeah, my brother wants me here. I got to be here. Shut your ass up. And you know? and he went straight to the board and started talking about we need to do this, that, and the third because that's what he was there for. That was that was his job. I mean, you know, he's the strategist. He has to do that. Yeah. And especially being the best swordsman. In in the realm, except for maybe Cole, but or obviously like Damon, I would say Damon's the best out of all of them. But um, yeah, that's that's that was his job, and he walked in, showed that he I'm here for this, and that was it. And even then, when it was him and Cole in the scene um, in his quarters, mm -hmm. they were still talking about it. He was like, "It should be you and me on the front lines, going out there and kicking some ass and starting this war now." And exactly. finishing it off. And of course, Otto Hightower was going to walk in and ruin some shit, bro. Right. Fucking, he irritates me. And hey, by the way, shout out to fucking Feet Boy Larry Strong, bro. He, he <laughs> is, yo, shout out to Larry Strong, bro. Fucking Feet, Feet, um, Feet Boy, <laughs> Foot Boy. Bro, he went to Aegon like a fucking, like, like a, uh, a G, dude. He went up to Aegon, was like, bro, your father, or your your grandfather was your was your father's hand, and look where look where your father's at. Yeah, pretty much. Like you need to you need to switch some shit up, bro. Yeah, and and you know uh, sh you know that was something that I didn't think was gonna happen. I thought Larry Strong was just gonna be scheming through everyone, you know, getting the you know kind of like the um what's his name, 
uh, Varys. I think his name was Varys, the bald head dude in Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Varys, kind of like a Varys, you know, the the he, secrets around the realm type of type of character. But see, here's the thing: I liked Varys. I, Varys me was too. a good character for me. I, you know, for him to come out, you know, for Footboy to come out and say, you know, your dad's dead, not fully saying it's this guy, but you might want to change some things up. And they, and she actually, Allison said. He's been through three kings as as the hand. There's a problem. Yeah, there's a problem there because you're not obviously saying the right shit or doing the right things. So yeah, off of your history, you probably shouldn't be now. And even in that case, I don't think I think strong. Yes, he was he was cool to say that, and especially for him to pull aside in front of people who actually needed the king's attention at the time. He was like, hey. Let me talk to you real quick. But yep. I don't think he's not scheming because I think if he gets rid of Otto as the hand, I think Strong's going to want to step in there and yep. be the hand and the foot. And the foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. The hand and the foot. That's funny. Yeah, man. Um, Lar- Laris, um, Laris w- surprised me with that, with that kind of meeting. And also... Um, when he went to Alice and he was like, I went to your quarters and they said you were um, un, un, un or what do you say? Like indisposed or something like that. Mm. You were indisposed. And she was like, yeah. And she like, had her feet on f- somebody else's back. Yeah. She <laughs> had her, she, she had her, yeah. She had her feet literally on someone's freaking shoulders <laughs> and fucking getting fucking ate up. Like there was no more water left. Um <laughs> Uh, Kiki and Lucas says Laris is jealous. Cole is banging Allison. Facts. Oh yeah, Facts. for sure. And he, I'm, pro- I'm pretty sure Laris knows. And I'm sure Laris is going to do something about Chris and Cole. Watch. They're going. They're going to oh, be yeah, beefing. He's probably got the rats watching for him and then explaining it when they come back. Yep. They're going to be beefing. Um. Uh. What else was I was I going to mention? Um. Oh, Auto Auto High Tower. Um. He is. Punk probably. Ass. Yeah, he is probably the most hated um, person in the realm right now. Um, he's taken over Aegon for that spot, but I love his character because he is—he is a necessity for a show like this. You need that villain who literally people do what he says, people take his advice. You know, um, he, even though he wants things to happen for himself, um, you need that kind of character in a show like this, and especially in a Game of Thrones universe. Um, but like Cersei, Otto High Tower, Otto High Tower is a Cersei kind of character. Um, everything she did and said, people listened, and she, it, everything always seemed to fall her way. Same with same with Otto High Tower, man. And unfortunately, um, it, it does piss us off sometimes. But you got you got to love his his character, like his necessity to a show like this. I wouldn't even say. Uh, I, I would say Cersei uh, more along the lines of. Littlefinger, and that's kind of how how um, strong is for me as well. They have that that little scheming behind the scenes, Littlefinger vibes. It's just yeah. Littlefinger was more of a dick, and everybody knew it right off the rip. Um, but yeah, Otto, T. I I mean, yeah, for him to his character as a as an actor, he's. I mean, obviously this this man is known for many many different roles, and he can play pretty much anything. But right now, bro, you're you're pissing me off. And if that's your goal, you're you're rocking it. But yeah, no, every time he speaks, I'm like, just shut up. Him and Cole, stop talking, please. Yep. And leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> and leave the room. <laughs> oh man. All right, man. This is where this is where this conversation is gonna get deep. Um, we're gonna talk about blood and cheese, bro. Uh blood and cheese was one of the most um, crazy scenes in a Game of Thrones, um, not as far as the scene itself, but the moral of what this this scene meant to the 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 Game of Thrones universe, House <clears throat> of the Dragon universe. This this scene was very hard to um, grasp as a as a solution to um, getting a son for a son. Um, Damon went to um, Damon went to the King's Landing. He um, found a gold cloak, one of his old um, Conrad or one of his old soldiers, and the soldier, um, his name is Blood. Um, he pretty much said, "Fuck the high towers." I hate that. Literally, he said, "Fuck the high towers." He said, "Fuck the high towers." <laughs> yep. 
and he wanted his money, bro. He wanted his money. So they went to go find Cheese, who was the dude who puts the rat traps all over the realm. Uh, of, of course, in season one, we found out the, the rats are literally all over getting in everything and it's a problem so this guy goes in sets the traps uh he has his uh his kicking toy uh dog next to him always with him but look, b- before we get into blend cheese let's let's talk about damon going to king's landing um of course it had to happen but do you think it was right for him to go to king's landing or do you think he should have sent someone to go to king's landing you know i thought about this last night when he when he went when he was walking up on the trucks, I was like, "Man, like, it 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 needed to be him, you know. If you're gonna if you're gonna really hurt your family, yeah, I think it should be you. Um, I don't think you should send anybody else to do it. But at the same time, he kind of does that. He does send somebody mm-hmm. else to go do his dirty work. But yeah, he can't really enter the castle because you know you're you're Damon. Everybody knows your face. Everybody knows who you are. You're you have white hair, even with your damn hood on." We know who you are, bro. Yeah. Like, um, it's it was so. I mean, hardcore in a way to to go to pay pay some dudes off. Hey, you know what? I need you to kill my family real fast, well, and you know you get the rest when it's done. Yeah, wild, just wild. Um, when he started talking to Blood and Cheese, he said, um, "I need a son for a son. I want Aemon Targaryen." Um, I want to. I want you to go find Aemon. Uh, he's a great fighter, so make sure he's you know he's can't fight with you guys. He, you know, just be careful. And then he looks at he looks at Damon and says, "What if we can't find Aemon?" And the the screen he he looked at him, and you uh, knew exactly bro. right. You knew exactly in your head. You're like fuck. You're I was like, like I, I didn't know like the intention, but behind that. But I was like, I want to know. I kind of want to know exactly what he says. I hope we get like a little bit of a recap. I mean, obviously, he said something along the lines of pretty much take anybody who fit the description of that. But, you know, were you saying like, I want you to murder who, whatever male Targaryen is in here. I want you to murder anybody, any boy with white hair. Or yeah. man with white hair, you know, like, uh and, and again, what a cold ass scene that could have been is to finish that sentence. This is what you're gonna say, and everyone's like, you know, bro, you got me shook right now. Yeah, yeah, and you know, shout out to the dog, man. The dog got a unfortunate fucking rib kick in the side of the uh, the side of the ribs, man. That every he I, that. He I he didn't that. no don't don't hate on the dog, man. Don't kick the dog. He ain't doing nothing to you. Um, I was on TikTok Live last night. Shout out to everyone who was in my TikTok Live last night. Um, I got hundreds and hundreds of comments talking about the dog, bro. Call like, Peter. why did why did they have to? Kick, yeah, that's what they're saying. Why <laughs> they have to kick the dog? Why they have to kick the dog? Man, poor dog, man, poor dog. Well, obviously, um, this man, like you know, for he's he's an animal catcher already, so he's catching the rats. He, you know, we don't know what he does with the rats. He probably just mm-hmm. kills them. Maybe he feeds them to the dog. Or, in a way, the, the dog goes and catches the rats, bring them back to him, whatever the dog catches. Maybe he already treats the dog like shit anyway, and we just got to see, you know, get the fuck out of here. You know, the dog's going to cause too many problems with him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kiki and Luca said, the way it was written in the books, Helena chose the younger son to die, and then it was shocking they killed the other one. It would have been an epic sur- uh, surprise, and instead it wasn't that. Okay, this is wh- this is where we're going to get into this, uh, Kiki. Kiki and Luca. Uh, the younger one survives, which I says. All right, this is where we're going to get into it, all right? So, when when Blood and Cheese, they, you, I want to say this before we get into it, into it. When Blood and Cheese walks into the, the room where... Eamon and Sir Chris Nicole were in originally. He shines his he shines his fire on the wall, and it's a it's a picture of um, Dragonstone and Vagar burning down Dragonstone. Like it's a mural of of that. Sorry, one second, chat. Where's my shit? 
blur my shape blur there it is yeah so he walks in with the fire he sh- he shines the fire on the on the wall and it's a mural of Dragonstone being burned down by by dragon fire i thought that was a dope ass scene i loved the 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 mural of it it was pretty dope but let's get into it bro cheese walks in finds helena puts a knife to her neck blood walks in and says who the hell is this right um helena doesn't know what's going on she's scared like i said she's she's doesn't know what's going on she she's she's um just traumatized from what's you know and he she says or he says i want a son for a son which one is the son now of course we would have wanted them to make it easier and just look to see who the son was i think it was kind of dumb the re- the way that they did it but they had to do it this way because of um the the um, book reference and the books um the book material she they ask her which one is the son right and if you guys remember that when we were talking about this previously when Hel- Aegon and Helena um, were talking and l- earlier in the episode, she says, I am scared of the rats, right? And she looked to the left. As soon as she said the rats, she looked to the left crib and she knew that was somehow symbolic of the rats. And then when he comes in, he says, I need you to point to the boy. Now, the thing about the story in the books, guys, just please remember this. The story in the books has a child, which would be the third child, named Maylor. Maylor is not in this not in this series. There's only two children. They are the twins of Aegon and Helena. There's only two kids. The twins, one's a boy and one's a girl. Maylor does not exist in House of the Dragon. So you guys have to remember the reason of them asking, you know, pointing which kid it, it is. Like, that's the reasoning. Mailer doesn't exist. Of course, it's different in the books. They're going to explain it more in the books because there's more to explain. There's, there's not that There's not that third character that they, you know, that jaw-dropping um, scene of what Kiki and Luca explained in the, in the comment. It's just, it's not there. But people were pissed off that, you know, Mailer wasn't there. They were saying, where's Mailer? It doesn't exist. And it's, it, take that for what it is because it's, it, it you know that's what it is um but i saw a cartoon on twitter today of that scene and they they did like a cartoon illustration of that scene and i was like holy shit like this could have been so much worse i don't think yeah you i don't really think for the show i think this scene is a perfect fit for the show as far as it goes me too um but from what i heard you know maylor existing who's to say he doesn't Right, because True. Aegon, Aegon, going around doing Aegon things, having his little kids fight in the pit, and obviously, I think, I think they even said some of them are, were actually killed already. Who's to say that one of the kids in the realm of his who are not living in the castle, um, who said that they didn't name him that, and he's just still around? But maybe it's a different. They might go a different route. Of yeah, exactly. Him. Maybe not even being traumatized. Now he's the next one in line for the throne. If they decide to kind of go that route, I think it's just you know one of my theories. But yeah, uh, I think definitely for the scene, it it worked out that way. And, and another thing, guys, Helena. Like I said, we're gonna go back to this uh, when they, when Aegon and Helena were speaking before. <coughs> Helena asked him, "What if he doesn't want to be king?" Which indicates to me, at least, I'll I'll speak for myself, indicates to me that she doesn't want him to be king. And that could be because of a a dragon dreamer thing. It could be her seeing things. Like I said, I don't know how that works. I don't know if she can if she could see that far in the future, but it sounds like she doesn't want her son to be King. And there might be a huge reason why. So the reason why people are asking, why did she just give up her son? She might have done it for a reason. She might have not wanted her son on the throne. She might have not wanted the you know that to reflect later on. You know, we don't know yet. So that that's the question that you need to ask yourself. I don't even think along those lines as she doesn't want him to be king. I think if she's that dragon dreamer and she can see the future, maybe she, in in a way without saying it, maybe he can't be king. Maybe she saw this already happening, so maybe he's like. 
what if he can't? You're exactly. wasting his time from actually being a kid while he can, or his last day. You know, don't take him away from what he's got to do. No. Um, but yeah, I think you know she's if she can see that future, man, she was already ready for it. And I think that's maybe another reason why she doesn't process those emotions like everybody else does because she's seeing all of it prior. It already happened in her head. Yep. And, and like I said, the, the reason why she gave up the, the, ba- the, the one to the left so fast and um, it was because she didn't, she doesn't know what to do in these kind of situations. Like I said, she's, she doesn't know how to process information. I mean, she has a throat, she has a knife to her throat. And she goes, oh, do you want my necklace? I mean, come on, dude. Like, you guys have to have some kind of, you guys have to remember she is not, um, she doesn't process this stuff like like normal people. And she has no one to talk to about it because they all think she's crazy. Like, it's it, it's just, you guys got to remember that. But a- another thing, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, they're known for the gore. They're known for just things being disgusting and, you know, the deaths and the the there's the sex that's in there. Just everything that's in the Game of Thrones universe is gore. Dismemberment of penises. It, facts. Hands. <laughs> Hands. All that stuff, right? What they did with this kid and not showing it was the best move they could have done. Oh, yeah. Not, not yeah. only not only not only did we not want to see it, like it 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 no like it shouldn't be on air. It shouldn't be on film seeing shit like that. It would have been about as bad as a dog getting kicked that we Pretty all much. had to see. <laughs> Pretty, been, would have been worse than that. Pretty much, and like to me, they um they did the best thing by not showing. And dude, the sound of them sawing off, like it, that was bad enough, dude. Dude, it actually made me cringe. Mm-hmm. It made me. I was like, oh god, like yeah, no, and 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 again. As far as her not not reacting, because I don't think, you know, you don't know what, like, you're trying to be like, dude, she's going to lose it. She's going to freak out. She might do something. She might stab him. She grabs her daughter and gets out and just, like, kind of walks. She's, yep. just, she's just out. And I'm like, um, do something other than <laughs> just, you know, yep. scream scream bloody murder throughout the the whole castle i mean she's not saying anything she is walking out you know she's in a little bit of a panic but she's like kind of cruising down the stairs they could have caught up to her if they really wanted to and murdered her too yeah but and she doesn't know if they would do that she was kind of and that was out. weird how they they let her go like that and and you you guys remember uh when blood and cheese were collecting the coins from the table where Eamon and um Chris, sir chris and cole were he said we need the head for a coin we need the head for the rest of the coin. So they had to do that. And, um, it, you know, of course, we. I'm happy that they did it the way they did. And, it, like, if you wanted to see all that stuff, it, it's, it's just sickening, bro. It's it's sickening to me. Um, and and the, the, the kid, real quick, sorry. No, you're good. The kid, um, they made the sound effect so great because you hear the kid, you know, muffled screaming. And then once you hear the the throat slice it cuts out yeah. i mean instantly and you're like he's done but yep. you can still hear you know like the, the squelching of the blood and the and his and you you know it's his throat and that like, dude you know, that's all that's all i wanted to hear dude or not all i wanted to hear that's all i needed to hear <laughs> Whoa, that, is bro. All, that is all i needed to hear i didn't need to see or hear anything else because that was bad enough dude and man people want to see more crazy um raymond says they should have done both i i I don't agree with that ray i really don't agree with that i think the way they did it um there might be we you got to remember there might be a reason why they couldn't put maylor in that show um the 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 writing and people got to remember the writing and from a book to a script is very different it is extremely different to be able to put everything in a show um and um from the book it just it, you know house of the Dra- or game of thrones was the same way there was a whole bunch of characters they didn't introduce in game of thrones um but mm-hmm. I, I think the way they did it was perfect um you can hear them use knives and chop up the kid it was yeah, exactly kika and luca uh helena is autistic spectrum yeah is that exactly she's on the spectrum and it should be obvious to people because of how the way she acts 
And people think like I, I, I duetted this guy today and he said, how did he she give up her son that quick? Does she not love her son? Does she not show any emotion? She no, she doesn't. She's proven it. And, it, you know, I did the, the video and um, it, it got pretty good views on it. And people agreed with me. So at least people are seeing that as a reasoning of why she doesn't show those kind of emotions. All right, um, this part is the ending, guys. We are going to talk about her running down the stairs. Um, if you guys remember in season one when Rhaenyra, uh, when Rhaenyra first gave birth and she was first introduced, she she um, was giving birth and went straight to the chambers where Alicent was to show the baby. That distance was the same from when Helena ran down to um, when she, Helena ran down to uh, the ba from the baby um, where the cribs were, where they took the baby, a son for a son, that same distance from there to where Allison was getting uh, was riding a, like a pony on uh, Kristen Cole. The same distance, bro. Like she ran down the ship. But the, the one thing I want to talk about is when she stopped at the end of the stairs, she gasped and she heard something behind her. Now, I don't know what that was because it couldn't have been the baby's voice. It couldn't have been. Because the baby was, for one, hand over the uh, the face, the mouth, and they were chopping down at the neck. Now, there was a voice or something was heard, but she stopped. But instead of going to her husband, Aegon, instead of going to Aemon, she went straight to her mother, right? She went to her, straight to her mother's chambers. She was getting busy, and she sat, she sat down and said, they killed the boy. Instead of saying they killed my son, they killed Jaceris, something like along those lines. She said they killed the boy, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's very, very important, that scene right there. And I'm going to tell you why. People, pe in my opinion, this is my guess. I did a video on this saying I think Eamon is the father of Helena's kids. And instead of saying the boy or her son... Jaceris, it was the boy, and you know what I'm saying. So I I really think that that was Amon's kid, and they and they killed him on accident. But what do you think about that part? Instead of her going to Amon or Aegon, she went straight to Allison and that whole scene. So yeah, again, no reaction. She, I mean, there's not there's nothing there. She doesn't do what any normal mother would do, other than I mean. Grabbing the grabbing her kid that's still alive and getting getting out of there, yeah. I mean, I could see that happening. But her saying they killed the boy, it, that's not a normal thing to say. They they killed my son. They killed, um, you know, they she to say anything else, anything else to indicate my child is dead, and she doesn't do that, which is which was weird. And again. Allison ain't well. She's not really reacting either. She's just like you know. I mean, I don't know if she was still uh, on her on her little ride there for a second, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was the fact that she ran for for me. She ran all that distance and didn't see a single soul. Nobody else was there. Yep. Okay. Is a is Cole supposed to be the one watching the halls at night, and instead of getting busy with Allison, he he was watching something, but it was the it was the uh, the roof, it was the ceiling. That's what he was watching. Yeah, and, and like, there's no way, there's no way, because everybody's someone, some guard should be watching the halls at all times. So did he say, hey, you know what, we're good for the night. I got this one. And sending everybody else out, maybe he didn't want to start no drama and have guards see him go into the room, yep. you know. Um, so I'm right now. I'm blaming him. Period. I don't. I don't remember hearing that noise. I was about to look it up on the show, but uh, I did see her reaction to to turning around. Yeah, she and, like stopped and was like, <gasps> like almost like a deep breath that she took, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was it was very strange. Very strange. And I, I am curious to see why she didn't go to anyone else's chambers. She she just went straight to her mother's chamber. Well, where she was at was pretty close. I mean, maybe that's and maybe again for you know, um 
saying she does have autism. Maybe that's her safe place. She knows that's maybe a safe place for her to be. So, you know, we could say um, in that case, that's where that's her her mind. That's how her mind works is go to the safest spot. I know where to be at. Yeah. So maybe she can't find Aegon. She can't find Aemon. You know, that's it. Um, but yeah. Or right, but the, the but the even even that part is are the kids in their own room, and even if so, how far away is Helena's chambers, Helena and Aegon's chambers from the kids' room? Exactly. And why? Yeah. Why didn't she go there first? Why didn't she warn the king first? Like, hey, someone just killed our kid. Someone might be coming after you right now too. I mean. Uh- the, the another thing is is we knew Aegon was sitting on the throne with his boys, so I oh, can that's see, right. I yeah. can see why she didn't go there. I, I forgot about that till just now. But let's think if she didn't know that he was sitting on the throne. Yeah, she true. Go back to the chambers. Well, she knew her mom was definitely going to be in in the chambers. So, mm-hmm. man, um, yeah, man, it, you know, guys, let us know what you guys thought about episode one. Um, if I had to rate episode one, I would give it an eight out of ten. I thought the episode was great. Um, yeah, we didn't get much action until the end, but we got um, we got what everyone's mindsets are after the death of Luceros. And I think that was a necessity. Um, for those who don't know, we are getting eight episodes this season instead of ten like we did last season, which will be the first season that we're getting um, under ten episodes since the Game of Thrones season eight. So they do have some they do have to um, kind of guide us into the right mindset with only eight episodes, because, you know, the last time we got this, we, you know, we seen what happened. Um, Also guys, Matt Smith, it was reported that Matt Smith confirmed they're going to be filming season three, which has already been greenlit um, officially been greenlit season three. We will begin filming sometime this year, which looks like we're going to be getting some time, some type of a premiere the end of next year or the beginning of 2026. Um, I, I'm excited for the rest of this season. I can't wait for it to see what's next. By the way, X, do you want to do a trailer reaction to the Weeks Ahead? The Weeks Ahead trailer? Or you know, you it's up to you, me, bro. I, I know you don't want to. Or I, know I don't, I don't like to know because I like to be, I like to be shocked. So I think for me, yeah, I don't know if I could do it. The, the only thing, the only thing I'll say uh, uh, to encourage you to watch it with me is you don't really know the characters that well, so you're not going to really know what's going on. I watched it, uh, uh, I watched it, but it didn't show much. They just showed different characters within the within the weeks ahead. That's why I think they put it out. But it's up to you if you don't want to watch it. No worries. Uh, if 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 Brent's watching, do it with Brent. But I don't know if I could do it because oh, I really not, like Brent's to know. Not, Brent's not watching. You're the only person I know wa- who watches this shit. Well, or, I should, you could do it with Garrett. Garrett don't watch it. I don't know if he's watching <laughs> it because he said he's. I think I talked to him about it. Sir Cole the Queen Slayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir Cole um, the Gold Miner. <laughs> but yeah, guys, make sure you guys are liking, commenting, commenting, and subscribing to the channel with notifications on so you guys are notified once a video is uploaded. Make sure you guys go follow my TikTok, Tones underscore TV on TikTok. I do video recaps of each episode um, live as soon as we as soon as the show is done. We do a live before the episode to kind of talk about it, and we do a live um, after the episode. We had a great live last night after the show was done. Um, we're going to be doing that on TikTok and then coming back here to be doing a full breakdown of the show or of the episode. Um, X-Rod will be joining me every week. If he doesn't, make sure you guys hit him up and send him nudes on his um, Instagram or whatever. <laughs> nah, uh, guys, he's, he's going to be joining me every week uh, doing this. This is going to be um, an every week thing, so make sure you guys are subscribing. But X-Rod TV, appreciate you, brother. Um, you got me, bro. Of course, man. We're going to be doing this every week, so stay tuned. But remind the people where they can find you on social media. Every social media, and actually, hopefully soon, YouTube. I'm trying to get all my stuff set up. So YouTube, social medias, uh, all of them, Facebook, Instagram, uh, 
What's the other one? X. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. Well, I do some stuff on Facebook. You can, you can say hi to me. I'm a little more personable on Facebook when I'm on it. So, but yeah, hit me up. Give me a follow. Uh, tell me if you like me. Tell me if you don't. Tell me if you like my, my opinion. If you don't, I don't care. Oh, by the way, w- would you give this episode one one through ten? Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight. Yeah. I want a little more in certain scenes, but I thought it was great all the way through. Yeah, I, I am sad we're not getting a Cree and Stark for the rest of the season, but you know, hopefully we'll see him more. But guys, thank you, thank you again for watching. If you guys didn't aren't, if you guys were not here during the live, and you guys are watching this on the replay. Make sure you guys are commenting and letting us know what you guys thought about episode one. Was it underwhelming? Was it overwhelming? Did you like Blood and Cheese? Did you guys like, um, you know, Kristen Cole, Rhaenyra, all that good stuff? Please let us know in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on social media, Tones underscore T, un, Tones underscore TV on all platforms. And go ahead and follow our podcast, Bad Thoughts Podcast, on YouTube and Spotify. But I appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Love y'all.